I picked up this Blue Yeti USB microphone on eBay. It was advertised as non-working. It's apparently got some problems with its USB port, which we'll take a look at in a moment. Oh yeah, you're a bad girl, aren't you? What? I really do enjoy finding broken tech with faulty power connectors because you get a steep discount for something that is relatively easy to repair. So while we're looking at a microphone today, this sort of repair is applicable to really any device that has a similar issue with its power connector. And this particular example is complete in box. It's actually in excellent cosmetic condition. Here we can see the volume control on the front, the gain and pattern selector on the back, and on the bottom we have the USB port and the pass-through for the headphone. So while the USB port doesn't visually look broken, once you plug the cable in, you can tell right away it's a little bit wobbly. And connecting the other end to my MacBook, it doesn't even power up. But as soon as I wiggle the cable, I can see the microphone come to life. However, the computer still doesn't detect it, so we likely have some severed data lines on the USB port as well. I'll be honest guys, I've had my eye on one of these mics for a while, so if all it takes to get this one working is swapping out the USB port, I'm gonna be super happy. As I was taking this apart, I noticed that on the right mounting screw, there were two washers, a skinny washer and a fat washer. But on the left mounting screw, there were three washers, a fat washer, a skinny washer in the middle and another fat washer. So we have one fat washer missing on the right side and I got plenty of washers in the garage. So we'll find a suitable replacement to get this guy back to the way it would have come from the factory. There's one main screw hiding underneath a rubber insert and all the control knobs need to come out in order for the housing to slide off. I thought I was being clever by wrapping the knob with a paper towel, but I pretty heavily marked the first knob I removed this way. So I went and got some heat shrink tubing to use as a barrier between the teeth of the pliers and the plastic control knobs. This seemed to work well for the remaining knobs. And towards the end, we'll see what we can do about sanding down and polishing out those marks that the pliers left on that first volume control knob. Out comes the screw. Then I realized that there were probably a couple more hiding underneath the sticker because the housing didn't really budge. So a little bit of hot air just to maintain the integrity of the sticker and peeled it back far enough to remove the remaining two screws. After that, the housing slides right off. Right away, we can see the problem with the USB port. Thankfully, it looks like the traces on the bottom are still good, so it seems to have severed with a clean break. Next, I have the hot air on 450 Celsius fan speed 5. And this footage is trimmed down. This was about two to three minutes of hot air and the port slid right out. Super clean extraction and we can actually see two broken pins on the right side there. And those would be one of the data lines and one of the power lines. Here, I believe I did pre-tin the pads and I applied some flux. I forgot to hit record here a couple of times. I was focused on doing a good job with the port and I had to remind myself to make sure I was recording, but I was just trying to clean up the holes with some wick. I generally have really good success with this method, although this board was particularly thick and I didn't get good results trying to wick up the solder from the holes. I also knew that there were the remains of those two broken pins in the through holes, so I didn't want to continue to rinse and repeat with the wick. I instead had the idea to flip the board on its side and prop it up using the helping hands. I reduced the hot air temperature a little bit here. I think I had it on 350 Celsius and made sure to keep the back of the board warm while using the narrow J tip on my iron was able to easily remove the remains of the broken pins from those two through holes. After that, between using the iron, the braid, and the hot air blown on the back, it made really quick work of clearing up the remaining through holes.
it might come as a bit of a surprise to you if you haven't had to deal with this before, but there are dozens and dozens of styles of USB connectors for the same USB type. So right here, this is a right angle mini USB type B and it has a very specific shape in terms of the pinout, the four posts that anchor the connector to the board. And I usually buy stuff like this from Mauser, but I happen to find a 10 pack of these on Amazon for pretty cheap. So now at least I have some spares. The connector pops right in and after adding some flux, I begin soldering in the pins one by one. Then I move on to the four posts and I make sure to build up a good amount of heat on the pad before flooding the pin with solder. Given that a port like this is going to experience mechanical forces by inserting and removing the cable, it's a good idea to make sure it's firmly anchored in there. Here I'm adding a little bit more flux, reflowing all the pins and doing the same for the four posts. Once we're done, clean everything up and check for shorts. Here you'll actually notice that pins one and two are shorted and that's okay because they're both ground pins. Pin two is either a no connection pin or a ground pin on these mini USB plugs. So we have a ground on all four posts, pins one and two as well. No ground on pins three, four or five. Pins three and four are not shorted to each other and pins four and five are not shorted to each other. So looks like we did a good job with the connector. Now it's just a matter of putting everything back together and testing it out. As for that one volume control knob that got a little bit chewed up with the jaws of the plier, I just sanded it down to make it smooth again and just polished out the scratches with some plastic polish to minimize their appearance. You live and you learn. So now I know for next time, probably a better way of taking off these plastic components. Here's a replacement washer for the one that's missing from the right screw. We are ready to test. So here I have sound properties open on my Mac. And as you can see, the only device in the list is the internal mic. Let's go ahead and plug in the Blue Yeti. And the mic powers right up. You guys can see that right there. And this will take a second, but there we go. Blue Yeti. Let's select that. And let's do a test recording and just mess with the gain controls a little bit. And now I'm speaking into the Blue Yeti. Now the gain's turned down. Now the gain's turned back up. That brings us to the end of this repair video. Now, while I wouldn't recommend this as your first soldering project, if you have a little bit of experience, mini USB devices like this are much more approachable than micro USB, USB-C, HDMI, etc. So keep an eye out for that device that you're after, especially one that might be advertised as having a broken connector. It'll probably be a fun project and you might even save a bunch of money while you're at it. All right, guys, I will see you again soon. Take care.